Hi. Let's speak about sustainable economy and entrepreneurship in the context of Europe and Estonia. Why isn't our economy sustainable at the moment? So we can't really consider Estonia's economy independent of the global economy. So we're not looking specifically at Estonia. So the Estonian economy is embedded within the global economy. Um, and when we say that it's not sustainable, what we mean is that its use of resources and its generation of waste is much greater than ecosystems can support. Um, and there are many reasons for this. I mean, probably the biggest reasons are to do, on the one hand, with externalities. Uh, I'm going to talk about two things, externalities and subsidies. So externalities means that if, for example, you buy shampoo uh, in the supermarket, in the shampoo there will be, for example, palm oil that will come from Indonesia, or Bali, probably. Um, and there are many very real social and ecological costs associated with the production of palm oil that you will not pay as the consumer. So the destruction of the original forests, the people who used to live there, the building of the dams to irrigate the, the, the land, the use of the pesticides, the death of the workers applying the pesticides, um, the CO2, the dead zones in the oceans as the nitrates are washed out into the sea. These are all very real social and ecological costs that the consumer is not paying. So when we buy, when we talk, for example, about cheap food, there's no such thing as cheap food or cheap anything. They're simply products that we're not paying for, that actually other species, unborn generations and poor people on the other side of the world are subsidizing our consumption. Um, the other is subsidies that, that um, governments around the world are paying enormous subsidies to large scale industrial systems. Um, we are subsidizing the destruction of the earth. Um, there are other causes, but those two on their own are probably the biggest. Um, in your keynotes, you also mentioned pathways to prosperity. Uh, why is it important in our economy to find new ways then? Well, I think particularly in gatherings like this, we tend to be very strong in visions. Like we've got a very clear idea of the world that we want. Um, but we tend to be much less, we tend to give much less thought to how we might actually get there. And so there are a number of future mapping tools, they're called tools for mapping the future, um, that can help us identify um, critical points in the system where small changes may affect large results. Um, so if we, uh, if we don't do this work, we remain happy utopians, um, dreaming beautiful visions, but without really understanding how we need to intervene in systems to make the kind of changes that are necessary. And how would it be realistic to transform a majority of companies this way? Is it the present for us or a distant future or some sort of an utopic dream? And how urgent is it to reconceptualize our economy and entrepreneurship in that way? Um, I think it's really critical. Um, so the, we will always have enterprises, but they may be very different in the future from how they are at the moment. So at the moment, the way we have created the incentives for business is to maximize externalities. So you, capitalism has been described as an externalizing machine, a machine for simply generating profits through transferring costs to future generations and poor people on the other side of the world. So if we're to come back within the limits, the acceptable limits of biophysical consumption and waste generation, uh, we need to do it in ways that are incompatible with today's systems. So how do we do that? I mean, I don't have the answer to that, but certainly in my classroom, we really explore what some of the changes might need to be. Um, and it seems to me that one of the big changes, I think that when we look back at this moment in history, we may see that one of the dominant trends is the transition from centralized to distributed organizational forms. So where today the economy is dominated by very large scale multinational companies, um, there are good structural reasons for believing that we're in the middle of a transition to much more smaller scale locally based networked 
enterprise types. Um, we also at the moment have generally legal systems globally in which there is a legal duty on the CEO and the, on the, the managers of companies to maximise profits for distant shareholders and that needs to go. So we're already seeing the emergence of B corporations and social enterprise which are enterprise types whose core purpose is not to maximise profit for distant shareholders. They can be profit making but that's not the core objective of the company. So we're already seeing this beginning this happening. Um, you also are one of the founders of Kaya Education in the world. So what do you find we need to do in our field of education to help the new generations to make better choices in terms of environment and also sustainable life? Um, so I'm especially fascinated by pedagogy by the how of education. I think the, that most reformers tend to focus on the curriculum, on what we're actually teaching. And it seems to me that um, uh, there is this inherent idea that if we change one set of textbooks for another set of textbooks, it's all going to be okay. And I think that's a very superficial understanding. So I think that we need to enable all of us, from children to adults, to... Um, to access not just our intellects, but our emotions, our bodies as well. So we were, so that we are bringing our whole selves to the learning process. Um, and I think uh, rediscovering the joy and curiosity in learning, rather than it being a boring chore that most kids find totally alienating and disempowering. Should we view education and environment separately or see it as environmental education? Mm. I would prefer to use the word ecological education. Um, so the idea, I mean, certainly on the, on the, the economics programme that I teach in England, um, the first module looks at ecological design principles, how natural systems self-organise. Um, and we do that both um, to explicitly locate economy as a subsystem of ecology, so that actually without healthy ecosystems we don't have an economy, which is the opposite of the conventional way of looking at things. Um, and on the other hand, because we're working at least with a hypothesis that if we're trying to design healthy, sustainable economic systems, a really good place to start looking is how other than human natural systems self-organise. You are the former president of the Global Ecovillage Network and in 2006 you were present when the Estonian Association was formed. Um, and ecovillages, I've heard, sometimes uh, have been called the laboratories of the future. Uh, what do you find to be the most important lesson in ecovillages that the society today would be able to and is ready to adapt? Yeah, good question. Um, I would say <clears throat> that there, there was a period probably in the 1960s and 70s when eco-villages were leading the field in terms of technological innovation. But I think for the most part that's no longer true. So for example if you look at renewable energy, that actually venture capital, large scale business, large scale capitalist enterprises have now, are now pioneering the, the evolution of new technologies in a way that eco-villages don't have the capital to. So there are still areas of uh, technological innovation that eco-villages have a role, but it's much less pronounced than it was previously. So for me, the area where eco-villages are most relevant as pioneers is in transformation of consciousness, in really um, unashamedly embracing the relationship with other than human species, trying to repair the rift that has developed between humans and the rest of the world. Um, and also in providing a gateway for indigenous traditions from other parts of the world. Like eco-villages are very friendly and inviting to wisdom traditions from elsewhere in the world. So my feeling is that probably the greatest gift at the moment is in terms of deep consciousness transformation. Okay, thank you.